Please put your hands together for our brother Aronde Yero, who is coming through Atlanta yes, yes. via Jamaica and now we know also via Ghana. All right, greetings. Greetings. Um, greetings. Oh, okay. okay, so um, for me, I'll just give a little bit of what I've gotten since I've been here. And, well, my journey here. Um, this, I have been what do we call Facebook stalking, uh -huh. Bomani, uh, and uh, Af Africa for the Africans for, for a long time. I've had it, uh, I've had Africa for the Africans in my uh, bookmark on various laptops over the last probably five years, maybe longer, uh, with the intention of uh, making do on that promise to myself, to my family. For me, this trip is bigger than a per, it's not, it's not a vacation. Though I've had a lot of fun, um, I don't think that my spirit came to have fun so much. But I've had I've had a lot of fun. Um, I've come um, to reconnect. Uh, one of my family missions is to, as we call it, re-Africanize our our family that started uh, well 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 into my youth, but culminated into name changes and um, studying our history learning our languages, and the idea is that um, our freedom, our liberation is to be centered, grounded in our um, identity as African people. Um, being from Jamaica, um, we learn that our ancestry is, is um, often through Ghana, Nigeria, uh, different places in uh, West Africa, uh, but particularly uh, Khan and Ashanti, um, and that's seen in many of our traditions. And um, so I said, well, if I'm going to go to the continent, I have to go where, which is closest to my ancestry. Uh, so that's uh, why we, why I'm here. Um, if there's any other questions, uh, we will uh, we'll have to answer. Yeah. I, I wanted um, Brother Yero to talk a little bit about his professional work. Okay. So I've been walking around and kind of stalking. If I ask too many questions, it's because I like you. If I'm not asking you questions, I don't know, something else is going on. So in the, in the course of us um, talking, he's doing some really important work that can benefit us and those who we love. So talk a little bit about your professional work. Okay. So professionally, I am a, um, a licensed professional counselor. Um, my, um, my primary work that I do is family therapy, what they call functional family therapy. I work mostly with youth who have been um, in the court systems where their probation officers might offer them an opportunity uh, to have family counseling in lieu of jail or whatever, and um, or in addition to probation. And so I go in for like say three months into the home um, and try to identify what are some of the ongoing conflicts. and. Um, and in the hopes that by strengthening the family, that we can um, uh, change their destiny. Um, I, so I'm a professional counselor. My main focus is in trauma work. Um, as an individual counselor, that's my main focus. Um, I have a dream of developing a trauma team uh, where we can travel throughout the diaspora and uh, provide trauma uh, support in um, depending on, you know, based on what's needed after a traumatic event. And that idea was spawned after the Trayvon Martin um, incident, uh -huh. where I noticed that our people were very heavy um, and a lot of pain. I think that particular um, trauma uh, was a collective trauma that affected particularly our mothers because they saw their sons. And um, I said, you know, we have to do more than just individual therapy. We have to learn to expand our, our range of who we can help and how, um, how much impact we can have. Now, the dream is also to go to other countries. Um, now, I, I um, realized that trauma, trauma work requires a, to be very grounded in the culture of the people um, in order to understand how to help. So the idea is to train those on the ground to go travel and train 
and so that you know whether it be ministers whether it be imams whether it be traditional healers whether it be teachers to be trauma trained so that they can help our people to heal because one of the uh, ways that oppression uh, maintains itself is through trauma to be disoriented to be constantly vigil doesn't doesn't allow you to think and plan and so trauma is a form of uh, is a tool of oppression uh, so when you see the um, when you see the the uh, police shootings this is it's more than just a um, this is more than just uh, an incident this is a message it's a message to stay in your place yes. and that tra that trauma is um, we take it in whether we realize it or not that's right that's right when you get pulled over and you those lights go on and your heart starts pumping okay. it's not just because you're gonna get a ticket thank you so that's trauma all right so at any rate um, the, my main mission as a healer is to provide um, help and, and expand beyond my own my own uh, range of home, you know, own my, only my my client base I, I, there's a question there. Question from Dr. Dr. Lemesee, kept the last so, um, Is tapping part of the tools in your tool belt box? Say it louder. Tapping. 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 For the, the, the process of tapping to overcome trauma, is that part of the tools, one of the tools you guys are using? Is that a particular um, trauma tool? Yes. I, I don't know that one, but okay. there are various trauma tools. Um, you have a question for you. Okay. Yeah, 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 there are various trauma tools, and as a as a therapist, as a healer, you kind of add things to your toolbox as you go. And so, for me, um, one of the things is getting in contact with ancestral, traditional healing methods for the mind, for the for our head, for our hearts. Um, we were talking about nine night last night, oh, yeah. and while I was in graduate school, I used that as a uh, an example. I did a paper on that to discuss how we use our tradition for healing purposes and we don't even realize it. For those who don't know what Night Night is, it's a tradition, particularly in Jamaica, but in other parts of the West Indies after somebody passes um, uh, for, for, for the, on the ninth night, there is somewhat of a party almost, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that has to do with the number nine being the number of the ancestors. Um, and so this is tied directly to our traditions. Uh, but it's there to also heal us. You know, and you see this in New Orleans when you know when the band starts playing after they they pass. Um, it's it's, and you have even the criers. Yes, yes. That's to get the tears rolling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, All right. Do you have a question? Yeah, I'm so glad that uh, yes, I have a question, and it's really an acknowledgement inside of a question because yes. when you identify yourself as a healer, I was like, thank you, thank you because you're speaking directly into where we're coming into, which is the post-trauma of our Mayaf. Mm -mm. So my question is, are you familiar with uh, post-traumatic slave disorder and post-traumatic slave trauma, those yes. two books, Dr. Patricia Newton and Dr. Joy McGray? Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with the work. I'm not an expert on the work, yeah. but I am familiar with the work. And it is, um, you know, in terms of, um, what we're learning about trauma has um, expanded exponentially over the last, say, five years. That now we're starting to realize that trauma can be inherited. Yes. That um, you you can you can experience something that turns on certain gene genetics, certain genes that you can then pass on to your children. So healing work is more than just your a responsibility to yourself. It becomes a responsibility to those who come after us. All right, and so when you, also when you're doing um, particularly uh, work um, where um, we have multiple traumas, um, then you can see how that can affect us. I, I, what comes to mind is um, John Henry Clark. He says that um, he says that that the the the, the, the healing, uh, the medicine we need. This is going to sound controversial. The medicine we need, um, the antidote that will heal us, is the blood of our enemies. And so, what am I saying? He's very clear what he's saying. What am I saying? What I'm not saying is that we, our healing is in, is, is when we separate ourselves from this, we will see that even our genetics will actually change. All right? Anybody else? Do we have any more questions for Brother Yero? 
Okay, well, if we don't, we're going to ask you to perform. Yeah, do you want a backup singer? Uh, 